welcome to another episode of the PMDT Buyers Club. I'm your host, Anandre Silva, and this is take two of episode 29, because you're probably wondering why there hasn't been any episodes this whole week. We shot, at the beginning of the week, we shot on Tuesday to load on Tuesday, but something happened to the data, I don't know what the hell happened, and we had to reformat the whole SD card, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, here we are on Friday, it's four o'clock, and we're shooting the show now, which is a shame because I really wanted you guys to watch this episode um, on Tuesday. But anyway, here we are. Today I'm talking about Murray, Murray, and Murray Estate. I'm talking about everything to do with the season. I'm talking about seedlings. It's a pretty interesting show. So let's start. I've got three samples, all from the same estate. They're all from Murray T Estate in Muscadia. Now, if you guys have watched this show before, and some of the regular viewers will know that we've had a few Murray Estate, uh, a few Murray samples on this show before. Um, Murray is one of my favorite estates. I think it personally is one of Muscadia's best estates. Now, Muscadia is obviously in the Dimula region of Sri Lanka. It's, the Dimula region has teas growing anywhere between 4,000 to 5,500 feet, and Muscadia is around about 5,000 feet. And personally for me, maybe I'm being a bit biased, I've got my Muscadia planters polo on as well today to represent the area. But personally for me, and for a lot of other tasters, Muscadia pro provides some of Bimula's, if not Sri Lanka's, best teas, especially at the seasonal time like we're getting into right now. So over the next few weeks, I don't know how the hell we're going to do the show over the next few weeks, by the way, but over the next few weeks, I certainly will be tasting some of the best teas that Sri Lanka has to produce. And a lot of them, I suspect, will be coming from Muscadia. So the tea that I've got here is from Murray. Now, Murray Estate is located right next to Sri Pada. Now, if you think of Adams Peak, you've got Luxapana on one side of the one side of the road and on one side of the mountain. On the other side of it, pretty much the last division of Murray goes up to the slopes of uh, of Adams Peak. Murray is is the nearest plantation to Adams Peak, and its tea is absolutely heavenly. And what I have here is three samples. I've got a BOP, a broken orange pecker, a BOPF, a broken orange pecker fanning. And then I've got a dust one, um, which are all grades that are used for, for export and, and export only. And they're all made from one particular set of tea bushes, which were first planted over 100 years ago. So these are all seedling teas. They're not VPTs, which stand for vegetatively propagated teas. Now, if you're wondering what vegetatively propagated teas are, first of all, click down in the link below and then go and watch the Science of Tea Lectures that we gave at the Old Course Hotel. And by the way, big shout out to Chowders. In fact, I'm glad in some ways that the video on Tuesday didn't come out because on Tuesday's video, I, I was there blackguarding Chowders saying that we won't have an episode out on Wednesday for the science of tea, but the guy got off holiday, hustled his ass off, and managed to get episode five of the science of tea talk. And it was actually us who couldn't get the video up on Tuesday. So big thanks to Chowders for getting that out. Subscribe to the channel, guys. We're going to be doing a lot of work from April all the way up till October. I can't tell you any more than that, but I'm saying subscribe. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on from not just the YouTube, but also from Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and maybe Vine as well. Yeah, definitely Vine as well. So check those out. But getting back onto the tea. So these are 110-year-old seedling teas. VP, back to the point, is stands for vegetatively propagated tea. And this is tea that, for example, someone has noticed a particular seedling bush is resistant um, to drought, or it does better with a certain pest, or it has a better flavor. And what they've done is they've taken that bush and they've cloned it. And then, as we talked about, I think in episode 23 or 24, we talked about clones like Norwood 1, Drayton 2, um, and then the P126A clone from, um, from the Assam region. That's what you get from VPs. Seedlings are completely different. Each seedling tea bush tastes completely different to the other one. It's unique. It's not cloned. So what I have here is teas from seedling tea bushes that are over 100 years old that were first planted when, when, when Murray was first established. And before Murray being a tea estate, Murray used to be a coffee plantation, as were all of the estates across the Mulla and the Kandy region, because before Sri Lanka planted tea, it was planting coffee. So let's have a look at the leaf first of these teas. This is the BOP. As you can see today, I've only got two sets of leaf because we're sent small amounts of samples. And of course, we filmed on Tuesday. We sent samples out to some of the clients who wanted to see this tea. 
realized the footage wasn't there, and then when we came back to shoot, we didn't have enough dust. We only had enough to liquor up here, so I can't show you the dust, but what I have got here is the BOP. Now, unfortunately, you guys aren't gonna get my initial reaction to what, to what this tea tasted like, but I can tell you something. Leaf is very, very fresh. Big, big, big smell coming off it. That rosy character that you know that Murray has, that rosy, rosy character that Murray has, is what this leaf here has. Comes off the hand like silk, very black, no stalk, no brown particles in the leaf. This is exactly what a good BOP should look like. In fact, I'm gonna do another episode about what the difference between this, this whole large leaf theory is, and I wanna show you guys what that means in another episode. But, wonderful leaf, every time I seem to lift this tea out, more aroma comes out of the leaf. It smells absolutely heavenly. It smells absolutely heavenly. And that's something that I like in the teas that we buy here at PMD. Let's have a look at the BOPF. BOPF obviously is the grade down from BOP. Smaller particle size. Again, off the hand like silk. No brown particles. No stalky bits. No fiber. The nose isn't as strong. It's not as strong as the BOP. You're not getting a big rosy hit coming out of the nose. But, if I show you the leaf, you guys can have a look at it. Good, good leaf. It just has this silky, silky texture to it. Just comes off your hand like silk. But not much aroma, not as much as the BOP. Let's have a look at the actual, at the actual infusions themselves. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this as well. Infusion one, let's, the BOP. Big rosy smell, massive rose, almost like walking into a, into um, a, a flower shop. I've, I've used that term before, almost like walking into a flower shop. Wonderful, wonderful smell. I've, been to, I've, I've spoken about this on the show before. Apple need to invent the ice sniff. In fact, I should actually pattern that, the ice sniff. If you guys could smell through your computer or through your tablet or your phone, I don't know how the hell you guys are watching this. If you could smell what I'm smelling right now, you guys would be thoroughly impressed. The leaf itself, very bright, slight coppery hint to it as well. Very appealing. Let's look at the BOPF. Well, Much stronger aroma on this one. Bear in mind the particle size is a lot smaller. Similar rosy character to it, but it has to be because it's from the same estate. It's just, the grade is just getting smaller. Again, the infusion isn't as bright. Particle size looks nice, but the infusion isn't as bright on this one. Not as bright as the BOP, but good aroma, better aroma. Now, moving on to the dust one. Much, much stronger, much stronger aroma to it. You're getting that rosy hint, but you're also getting a much deeper, almost slightly maltier note coming out in this tea. Still very appealing. Yeah, much more of a little slight malty hint coming through. If I show you those two there, you can see the difference in the particle size between the dust one and the BOP. The dust one is the one in my left hand, the BOP is the one in my right hand. So you can see the difference in the two, in the two particle sizes. A lot of people will see BOP for the first time and think that it's dust. But if you want to see what real dust looks like, that's what it looks like. You can see a big difference in the leaf size. So those are the infusions. Now let's have a look at the actual cup colors themselves. Well, the BOP cup, slight gold, rim to it, very thick looking cup, very bright as well though, let's give this one a go, 
Big aroma still coming off the nose. Wonderful. Cracking tea, guys. Absolutely cracking tea. Everything you want in there. It's bold, it's brisk. So much flavor. The flavor profile at this time of year is just going to shoot up. The teas are only going to get better as we're coming into the season. If you want to know more about the season, click the link below and you can go to my teaching article that I, the, where I blog about what the season is. A lot of flavor, especially in the mid to back palate, especially on the sides of your mouth. You're getting a, a, a note of Getting that rosy note coming out right in the middle of your palate. Very nice, very full around the mouth. I think that tea will go exceptionally well with milk. Very, very well with milk. And I think if you actually put a bit of milk to this, I think the cup color will actually come out with that pinkish hue, which is very typical of good Murray teas. Let's have a look at the next one, which is the BOPF. Now, one thing you'll notice as we come down from the BOP down into the dust one, you'll see the cup starts to get thicker and thicker. Now that's because the particle size is smaller, and when particle size is smaller, your cup is going to get stronger. So, let's give this one a go. There's something lacking in this cup. There's something lacking in the BOPF that the BOP has. It's a little flatter in the, in the mid to back palette. You're not getting that rosy note that you almost search for with this BOP. It's not as full. It just lacks something. I'm not sure what it is, but... There's something lacking in this BOPF. There's something lacking. It's missing quite a few, quite a few notes that the BOP has in abundance. Let's go into the final cup, the dust one. You can see that it's a very thick cup, almost black in color, little golden rim action going around there, but it's still bright, very thick. Dust one teas are the kind of teas that you want to have. If you really want something strong, something very thick, you want to go for something like a dust one. People seem to think that dust ones are bad teas. You can make great orange peco and then you can make absolutely terrible orange peco. In the same way, you can make great dust one and you can make terrible dust one. So leaf size, and I've said this before, leaf size doesn't determine the quality of a tea. It's only a grading system. Wonderful cup, wonderful cup, very thick on the palate. It almost coats your palate. You feel like you've got layers of paint that have just been painted all over your tongue and across the sides. Very thick, very full, very bold and very brisk. This is something that's gonna get you up and keep you up. It's just, it, it's just full of caffeine and you can feel it. You can add a bit of milk to take off the, the kick in this tea. A slight little multi note actually towards the back end of your palate. A slight little multi note right in the back actually. Back end of your palate. But I think with a bit of milk, it'll just mellow this tea down just a tiny bit and, and you'll be able to enjoy it just that bit more. For me, let's rank these teas up towards. Well, it's going to be between the dust one and the BOP. There's something lacking in the BOPF. Let's just give this a taste again. Mm. I'm going to go this way. BOP. Dust one, then BOPF. For me, the BOP is a much more rounded tea. It's not too thick, it's not too flat, 
it hits every note. It's well rounded, you're getting the rosy characteristic, you're getting a wonderful mouthfeel, it touches every point in your palate. Tip mid to back on the sides, and best of all, it leaves a wonderful rosy note in your mouth as an aftertaste. Dust one, very good tea. It's just too thick for my liking. That's, that's me personally. Maybe you like to have a very thick liquoring tea. If so, this dust one is the kind of tea for you. Whereas with the BOPF, it's lacking something. It's lacking what these two teas don't have. It's missing a few of those notes. It certainly doesn't have that rosy characteristic. And it's a little flat in the mid to back palate. So, there you have it guys, this is the 100 year old China Seedling Tea. It's not gonna be on the website just yet. I'm flying out to Sri Lanka Monday, so hit me up on Twitter to stay up to date with, with what we're gonna be doing. I don't know how we're gonna get the show out or if I'm gonna have time to even do the show, but I will try and keep you guys up to date on Instagram and also on Twitter, and then where I can, I will certainly shoot a show, um, and then either way, I'll have lots of footage that we can come back and then Chavez can edit. I love how I just dropped that in there. Chavis can edit, he doesn't even know, he knows now. Chavis is gonna be editing it and, um, and we'll, we'll get all that stuff out for you guys over the next few months. Like I said, subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot of content dropping from April to I think October. We finish up, I'll give you a hint. We finish October, actually I'm not even gonna give you a hint, I'm gonna leave you guys there. Guys, subscribe to the channel, watch episode 30 because I've already shot that, not that I like to shoot that um, because I like to keep my finger on the pulse, like for example, over the last two days there was a, a bit of going on on Brunswick Estate, hopefully that's been sorted out now. I saw some of the pictures and I happened to see our very own Dalmar Adesela at the front of a massive crowd outside the factory, so that's why I like to keep the show coming. Some people think I should put a couple episodes in the can. But, uh, but I'd like to keep my finger on the pulse, you know, literally on the pulse so that we can keep up to date with events. Guys, thank you for watching and I'll catch you very soon on the Tea Buyers Club. Happy sipping.